and welcome to a new vlog. It is Tuesday and I am at my parents' house. I'm out in the driveway. But as usual, I knew if I didn't start the vlog right now before I go inside, I'm gonna get so distracted by the doggies that I'm not gonna be able to properly introduce this vlog. So welcome if you are new here. Hi, I'm Andrea. I'm a full-time writing instructor, part-time content creator, and indie author. And welcome back if you are a returning viewer. It's great to have you here. I'm over here today because I also have a hair appointment. I have about 40 minutes before I have to leave for that. I'm getting over here a little bit later than I wanted to. I had to make a stop and run a quick errand that was not part of the plan today, but kind of just ended up on the schedule for today as of yesterday, and it was fine. It's just I couldn't get going any earlier, and so it just ate into my morning a little bit but it's all good. I'm gonna get inside and snuggle with the doggies and talk to mom for a bit before we have to go to the air appointment. But welcome to the vlog. We'll see what happens today. I make no promises for the rest of this vlog. We'll just have to see, but welcome. What are you doing? Come here, come here. What are you doing? Hmm? Okay, it's now a little while later. My hair appointment got pushed back, so I've got a few minutes, but I'm about to go into the salon right now. I didn't get to even sit down, <laughs> basically, when I walked in the house earlier. So it's a good thing I started the vlog when I did, although this vlog already feels like it is completely run off the rails, and I'm not sure if I can get it back on track. Yeah, my parents are getting a new TV tomorrow, which is great. They've needed one for months. I wish they had gotten one back during the holidays because it would have been nice. The one they have, they've had it since they moved into that house, I think, which is going on, tw it, they can't have bought it when they moved into that house because that was, that was like 18 years ago. That TV is still probably at least 10 years old, um, if not older. My TV, to be fair, is about 10 years old and it's still doing pretty well, so maybe theirs is that old. So it's just time for a new one. The screen just isn't as good and now it's got an actual like black line across the screen. So something in it is just dying. But a new TV, it just everything has to get moved around for some reason now. Um, I mean, what she's moving, she was already planning on moving. I just don't know what the new TV in the living room has to do with that, because we're moving stuff in two of the bedrooms. And anyway, we got one of the things swapped out, or it's two different TV units, furniture units. And so both of them are built for old fashioned TVs that are much deeper. And so they're pretty wide pieces of furniture. And we got the one moved out of the front office and into my parents' bedroom, but the one that was in my parents' bedroom, we were able to get it out of their bedroom and all the way up to the front of the house. And the, the cornering of the doors is just enough that we could not get it in. We might if we tip it on its side, but it's like a heavy, real wood, oak piece of furniture. So that's what I've left back at the house. So that's what I get to go back to. It was just feeling very, there's a lot of stressful energy in the house right now. Gus is hiding in my dad's office. Lexi just wants everyone to go sit on the couch. And yeah, it's just going to be interesting. So I'm gonna go in to the salon and just spend the next hour or so letting someone mess with my hair and make me look a little bit prettier than I feel. I'm just, I'm hot, I'm miserable, I'm stressed about what I'm gonna go back to. <laughs> I know my mom is really stressed, so yeah, it's not ideal. So we will, we will see how the afternoon goes, but for now I'm gonna get inside and go get my hair done. So here's the before, all whacked back into an invisible bubble. Okay, I'm done, and I'm back home. We've done a trim, and then she just blew it out with a round brush. We've touched up the roots. So, 
it's feeling a lot better. <laughs> I'm not sure it's really showing up on camera, but the ends feel a lot better and a lot healthier. So that's great. I don't get trims regularly, but I do like to do them every few months or so. So yeah, I'm loving the way it's kind of just swooping up a little bit at the ends there. And my bangs, my curtain bangs that are now growing out feel a lot better too. So it's three o'clock. It's gotten a bit late and I need to go inside and see if mom is relaxing on the couch or if she's still tearing the house apart. Okay, so <laughs> this vlog is just going, <sighs> I feel like this vlog is nothing but chaos. So we've made some changes up in the front room. It's still a mess, but this is now over here, the exercise bike, and then there was a TV unit there. That unit is now, which it didn't have a TV on it because the TV is in the corner. This was my dad's old TV when this was my dad's old office. Now his office is on the other side <laughs> of the house. So this is like the guest room slash exercise room. So we've moved that unit out and then that is in their bedroom now. And the one that was in their bedroom is now in the living room. So mom has been very busy getting this put into place. This is what she's been doing while I wasn't here. This will not be its permanent home, I don't think, but it's out of the way <laughs> for now. Now we can kind of relax, I think. Mom's still running around doing stuff. And I think the dogs need to go out. Lexi Lou! Oh, she's ignoring me. Lexi Lou, do we need to go out? Hmm? Come on, Lexi Lou. Come on, little slowpoke. Come on, little slowpoke. Good girl. It's a hot day and not a cloud in the sky. Oh, there's some clouds over there. So yeah, I think we're finally done, or mom's finally done. She's done the majority of it while I was gone. That big wood unit was just up in the front foyer because we were trying to get it into the guest bedroom up front um, and it just wasn't going to fit. So we might, are we still gonna try to get that in the yeah, bedroom? I'd, I'd we like try to. tipping it on its side? I'd like to because I wanted to use it for people to put their suitcases when they come visit. Yeah, like it would fit the big space where the TV is supposed to go. You could easily put like a carry-on suitcase in there and use it as a luggage rack. So it makes a lot of sense to put it into that bedroom. So we think that unit might fit in there if we tip it on its side, but it's solid wood. Was it oak? Yeah, it's kind of oak. Solid oak? Yeah. It's heavy. <laughs> so that will be a project for another day. Oh, okay, it might not be oak wood, but it's heavy because it is solid wood. It's not Ikea particle board. So where's Lexi? I've lost Lexi. Oh, there she is. Were you exploring down the side of the house? Did you just realize that mom might have gone inside? Where's mommy? She's like, oh my God, where's my human? I'm not her human. I'm not the human she really cares about. Where'd mommy go? Hmm? Gus, are you done? Do not roll in the grass. Gus, he's got that look. There's the, a way that he looks and a way that he like moves. Come on, it is too hot for this. Come on, come on. He's deliberately ignoring me. Yeah, I see you walking away from me. Gus. Do not roll in the grass. Come on, we are not doing this. If you want any snuggles from me at all, we go inside now and we don't roll in the grass. Come on, come on. You are so stubborn. You are so stubborn, come on. Come on, let's go inside. <laughs> Goofy dog. I know him, he would roll on the grass and get all dusty and dirty and then as soon as we sit on the couch, he'll want to come and snuggle with us. Come on, let's go inside, it's hot. Inside we go. And they both run into each other as they come in the door. Okay, 
I'm gonna try to sit down and relax. I'm gonna go see if mom needs help with anything and then try to get her to sit down and relax and see if we can get this afternoon back on track. I'm sure we've got a house hunters to watch and then we're gonna do dinner later. I think mom said she's got chicken and potatoes and some green beans, so that should be delicious. dinner it was delicious it was very simple but very delicious mom mom just did baked chicken in the oven and little mini baked potatoes and then green beans just tossed in a skillet 30 minute meal 30 minute meal yes okay take your chicken it's a nice okay. big chicken breast like that yeah. right yeah slice it in half Make it cook faster. Cook yeah. faster. Take your potato, slice it in half, put it on your foil next to each other, each half. Mm -hmm. So it cooks faster. Okay. 30 minutes instead of an hour. And then green beans. At, once you know the chicken and the potatoes are done, you do the green beans because they don't they, they don't take, take long. And all I do is put probably a quarter of a cup of water, a drizzle of olive oil, and a pat of butter. In the green beans? In the green beans. Cover it. Let it steam on me medium high. All the water evaporates. Mm -hmm. By the time the water evaporates, it's, it's pretty much done. Okay. And then you can do it a little bit longer if you like it to be a little bit brown like this. But the I green beans were really good. <laughs> turn, turn the oven off and you can let it just, or turn the stove off. I have an electric laptop. Turn it off and it'll finish cooking if you like it a little bit more. If you don't like it, um, the, this was kind of um, a little crispy. They were good. When I, it, it kind of got a little bit more done. Okay. So if you like it crispy, a little bit undercooked still. Just take it off the heat completely. Okay. If you like it a little more cooked, you can leave it on, but turn the oven, turn the stove off, okay. and the residual heat will cook, keep cooking it. And then that's the leftovers of the chicken. 30 minutes and it's done. Yeah, <laughs> chicken didn't take, actually I think it was at 400 degrees. Okay. Probably less than 30 minutes, because I think I overcooked the chicken. <laughs> it was a little dry, but it tasted really good. So if you're what did you for a fast meal for the? What fam, did you put on the chicken? Um, I do have my own spice mix ahead of time, but so what's in your spice mix? It's got paprika, coriander. I think I have cumin in that one. So cayenne, black pepper. Did I say paprika already? Coriander, cumin. Uh, sometimes I'll throw some um, nutmeg or cinnamon in there. Ooh. Does it? Because of all the other stuff, it blends in and you don't even notice there's yeah. like a cinnamon. Don't put a lot. So various spices, various spices. pepper, mm -hmm. olive oil. Salted. Salted. Of course. And a squeeze of lemon. Yeah. Squeeze, squeeze a, a lemon. lemon. If you don't like lemon, trust me, you won't notice. Okay. I don't like lemon. And I saw her squeeze it in there. I did taste it ever so slightly. 
but not so much that it was like overwhelmingly lemony and unedible. So she did, you did like two squeezes of a lemon. Yeah. I probably would have done one. Yeah, I did only half a lemon. Yeah, but you did two squeezes of the half a lemon. Well, yeah, because my lemon squeezer it squeezes yeah. more out of it when I yeah. do a quarter of the lemon. Yeah, anyway. each time. I did taste the lemon, but it, w it was still good. <laughs> for anybody who... Oh, mom loves her lemon squeezer. There's no product placement on this. Andrew's not not getting, sponsored. Getting sponsored. Hashtag not sponsored, but KitchenAid. Kitchen Kitchen if you want to sponsor, let Amazon. me know. Amazon. What I like about this, because I have old lady hands, is you put your lemon, you hold it down, and you just push down instead of having to be sitting here with the lemon squeezer mm -hmm. or turning mm -hmm. in it or whatever. And then you just pour it out. It's got this nice little catch thing where it catches all the juice. Yeah. So she was enjoying and that. My new, <laughs> if I had a video vlog like Andrea, it would be one of my favorite things. Okay. <laughs> KitchenAid. So, uh, Amazon. So I that's remember. so that's your product of I, the week for our kitchen. It, it wasn't exorbitant. So that's our cooking product of the week uh, for our Cooking with Judy segment of this vlog. <laughs> you have Cooking with Judy segments now. I've just made that up, but no, we're gonna totally run with that. We're gonna do some more throughout this summer, I'm sure. Yeah. No, I was just thinking I wanted to make tomato soup, even though that's not a summer recipe, and I'm like, I need to go dig up the vlog where you mom made, no, tomato soup. Did I say chicken soup? I meant tomato soup. No, he did say tomato. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't it. know that I. You'll see it when you rewind. I don't know that I vlogged you making chicken soup, so we might have to do that this autumn. But I know I vlogged her doing um, tomato soup, so I might dig that up soon and make myself some tomato soup. I guess I'm not able to take any home with me. Well, you want to take some home? I you would like to, but I don't think there's enough for leftovers for all of us, so. This is enough for you, so you can take Can it. I take all the leftovers? Yeah, because I have leftovers for me and Dad. I don't have any potatoes, but I do have, um. Now you could take a potato. I've got french want. fries oh. for in the freezer. Okay. There you go, Andrea. Do a side. <laughs> Andrea comes and gets her. My doggy bag. <laughs> I'm gonna put these in the fridge for now. Are we taking the dogs out? Yeah. Okay, we're gonna take the doggies out. Mom's made fresh dog biscuits for them with mint, so they're green, which is very interesting. It's for their teeth. It's for their teeth. Because <laughs> these poor dogs have no teeth up. Oh, it's so bright. Wow, my camera does not know what to do. There we go. It's very bright out. It's 93 it's degrees. Have to shut the door before she finally arrives. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, I think we're gonna let them do their thing out here, and then Mom and I are gonna watch another, gonna watch one more House Hunters before I leave. Okay. Because the sun's gonna be up for a while longer still, so I don't have to race to get home. I'm sorry we couldn't get the thing where you wanted it to. Mom's, Mom was very upset. Well, like she actually looked sad. You were gonna have to chip it on its end to do it. It's now. gonna be that's a lot of work. Be, that's not gonna be. And fun. I hope it doesn't break it. No, it shouldn't. Okay. Well, I have to be very careful with the floor and with the unit. But so I'll come back and we'll try again. I've done no writing today. I'm oh, not sure God, any geez. writing is going to happen. I don't Probably, know that she's gonna forget that she needs to go to the bathroom. Come on, let's go. <laughs> So I haven't done any writing. I don't know if I will get any writing done today. I might just try to do, I don't know that I can do double tomorrow, but I might try to do like 1300 words a day over the next three days, three or four days, and then that would get me back on track. Doing so well, I don't want to skip a day. I just don't think I'm gonna be able to get any writing done. I just think I'm gonna be way too tired by the time I get home. It's been a good day. It's just been a very busy and stressful and hot day, dealing with moving furniture around and then running errands and all of that. So 
So yeah, I'll hang out here for a little bit longer with mama and the pups and then get home and we'll see what I do the rest of the night. I don't have time I don't have time for a nap but it's time for a nap is how it feels it's 1 I have an appointment a video appointment in about 15 minutes so I think I'm gonna write for a little bit I just I can tell my brain is really tired I've done next to nothing today I slept in until about 10 and then proceeded to just lay in bed and scroll on my phone and push a video live. Like it was just, I was doing work bits, like YouTube bits in bed for about an hour. Finally got out of bed at about 11, had breakfast, watched some YouTube, and that's been like the last almost two hours. No, yes, no, something like that. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Anyway, I now have only seven minutes before I need to jump on my call. I'm still gonna try to write for seven minutes. It'll be five minutes, six minutes now. So I'm gonna do a little bit of writing and then I will continue writing after my call. I also would like to try to go for a walk this afternoon. It's, it's 89 degrees, but I think that's supposed to be the high. And it's been a little bit breezy, so I'm hoping that will keep up and we can just go for a nice relaxing walk at the end of the day. Cause I just feel like, just, ugh, brain is just not raining today. And I think a walk would help if I can manage the heat. Anyway, time to write. Okay, it's, it's, <laughs> I'm trying to remind myself 
that a stressful 30 minutes doesn't make it a stressful day, today's been fine. But it has been a stressful 30 minutes. I'm having an issue with the YouTube Creator Studio. I've got videos, two videos that are missing. They're visible on my channel page, but they're not visible on my dashboard. And my toilet is also going nuts. It keeps running like it's refilling the tank, which it's been doing, and I've been meaning to call maintenance. Anyway, the last 30 minutes have not been ideal, but writing has gone well. So I finished my call at three, a little bit before three, and I got back to writing, um, and I wrote for about an hour, a little over an hour, plus the five minutes I did before um, my call. So I pretty much started writing as soon as I hung up my call and I think we were done by like quarter to three o'clock. So I probably wrote for about an hour, hour and 10 to an hour and 20 minutes. And I have managed 1,522 words, which makes me feel really good. I also did some dictation again, and that's one of the things I wanted to talk about in this video. So I wrote about a thousand words by typing, and a little bit over a thousand words, and then I did another almost 500 words in a combination of typing and dictating. So I probably dictated about 400 words and wrote about 100 words mixed in there. I was able to figure out that I can have my, if I have my noise canceling headphones, because then at a certain point, like, the air conditioning was really starting to get to me. I was getting sensory overloads too much. And I was hearing some sort of like humming vibration. It sounded like it was coming from here, but it could still be connected to the air conditioning. When I get stressed, my brain does really weird things. I'm sure I'm not the only one who has that issue, but yeah, it's not been ideal. So I figured out today that if I plug these in and have them running through my laptop and have music going, when I turn on the dictation feature, it will pause the music. But if I disconnect these from the laptop and have these connected to my phone, I can listen to music on my phone with the noise canceling headphones and dictate at the same time. And I can hear myself speak well enough with these on and with music playing lightly. So it cuts out the air conditioning, but I can hear myself speak. So that might work. Um, now the problem is I can't listen to my Epidemic Sound project playlists <laughs> on my phone. I, there is an app. I need to see if I can download the Epidemic Sound app that might let me access those playlists and just play them through my phone. Otherwise, I could just listen to other music on my phone for the times that I'm dictating. I think for the most part, dictation is not going to be my main way of writing. It's not my preferred, but like it could, it can work in times. So I did want to talk about pros and cons, first impressions, things, things I'm noticing and ways I think I will probably use dictation in the future. So my ulna nerve and the pain and numbness in these fingers has been fine today, even while typing, but I have been having some just general like soreness in like the top of my hand. So like hand pain is not going away. If it's not something related to the ulna, ulna nerve that I am still dealing with general joint pain or just random nerve pain connected probably to my fibromyalgia, pain in my hands is just going to be a thing I have to deal with. And so as I mentioned in the last video, I think I'm feeling like dictation is something I need to start playing with just a little bit more and getting used to it and maybe using it once or twice a week so that I can give my hands a little bit of a break. This summer I need to be doing a lot of writing. I need to be doing a lot of content writing, blogging, writing LinkedIn posts, things like that. For my coaching business I need to be doing a lot of drafting, I want to do a lot of outlining, I want to do Camp Nano in July, I've got all the editing to do, so like any little thing I can do to reduce how much typing, physical typing I have to do is probably a good thing. 
So I am gonna keep playing with dictation. Pros of dictation. So getting to our pros and cons. Pros, you're not using your hands, so that does reduce the likelihood of repetitive stress and strain injuries on your hands. Other pros, <laughs> For now, like that's that's really it. But that's a big thing for me to to alleviate to relieve a repetitive stress, strain, and injury is a is the only valid reason I really need. Now I know other writers like dictation because they feel it helps them write more words. So far, I feel like I'm writing at about the same speed. I feel like dictation slows me down a bit in some ways but it speeds me up in other ways and so even though I pause more to come up with what I'm going to say once I know what I'm going to say dictation types it up faster so I feel like it just balances out in the end I don't at this point this early in the process I don't feel like dictation is helping me write more words faster but I I don't feel like it's slowing me down overall either it feels slower but ultimately it's about the same because I feel like I make up some of that speed in other areas it definitely feels clunky it feels a bit awkward having to speak the pronunciation the punctuation there are apps where you don't have to do that but then I feel like I'm adding in other steps in using a third-party app and then having to get that stuff in there. By using the dictation feature built into my computer, I'm able to dictate straight into Scrivener. So I don't have to dictate in another program or in another app and then copy and paste it into Scrivener. I'm able to do everything in Scrivener. I can watch my project target, my little word counter, still ticking over one word at a time as I'm speaking. So it's the same visual process. I'm just not using my hands. <laughs> I think cons for me, the a big con would be that I'm using my voice. This could uh, end up meaning repetitive strain on my voice and my vocal cords. So that's not ideal and is something that I'll have to be aware of as I'm working, as I'm dictating, to make sure that I'm not doing too much dictating and burning out my voice just because I talk so much with YouTube. So like I think dictation might be good on a day that I'm not vlogging or like when the semester starts on a day when I'm not teaching, dictation would probably be, probably be fine. But like if it was a day where I was teaching or vlogging or both teaching and vlogging, to then have to use my voice to dictate for writing would not be a good idea. So I think if you are prone to wearing out your voice or if you're already doing a lot of talking on a daily basis dictation might not actually be a good thing for you and that's something you don't hear a lot about in videos of authors talking about dictation your vocal cords are a I don't know if they're technically a muscle but you know they're a part of your body just like your hands are and you can get repetitive strain of your vocal cords. I think it would take a lot more talking than I typically do to cause the same level of irritation in my voice as I get in my hands and my wrists. So like it's not something that's going to put me off dictation, but it is something, it's not like, yay, you'll never have any sort of injury again by using dictation because you could still end up straining your vocal cords. But yeah, so far like the the pro the pro definitely is just to be able to give my wrists and my hands and my fingers a break. And the biggest con for me, now that I know that I can put music on my phone through my noise canceling headphones so I can still have that quiet environment with my music playing but still dictate. Now that I know that, I think the music issue is no longer the con, and I think the clunky feeling of it, of just having to speak the punctuation, once I get into it, like, it's awkward to start, but once I've dictated a few lines, like, I get used to it. It's, it, you really do adjust to it. Some things I'm noticing that help me, I didn't have it delete any sentences this time, but I also was only dictating for, like, three to five inches of, space on the screen at a time, probably like 200 words at a time at the most. And so I do wonder, I'll keep playing with this, if 
by dictating in shorter chunks and then turning off the dictating and then starting it again if that keeps it from glitching and suddenly deleting sentences um, or half of sentences. So I'll keep playing with that and keep you updated. But I prefer, and so my tip, um, especially if you're just getting into dictation, is to dictate for smaller chunks at a time and then stopping the dictation, which in Scrivener and using the built-in dictation feature of my Mac, stopping the dictation is just clicking into the Scrivener page and starting to make some edits by hand. That will turn off the dictation and then I've got to start it again to start dictating again. And so I'm noticing that I kind of prefer to dictate for a short chunk and then I kind of, it's not that I have a specific number, but once I see it make like four or five mistakes, which will happen even in a short block of text, I like to go back and fix those mistakes sooner rather than later. Otherwise I worry that I will miss them and it will make for an even messier first draft. And I, my first drafts are always messy, but I don't want them extra messy because dictation has screwed things up. Since it gets certain character names wrong, since it sometimes puts the wrong word in, at one point I said the character side, like, but it put side as in like your side. And so I don't want to have a bunch of those sorts of little mistakes. Yeah, so first impressions are good. I think I will continue using dictation for drafting like one or two days a week just to give my hands and wrists a break. But one thing I'm thinking it could actually be really helpful for and that some of these issues I'm having wouldn't apply as much is general note taking. So I think spitballing ideas for content marketing like blog posts, LinkedIn posts, things that are written more in my own voice, things that won't have quotation marks, that won't need a bunch of new paragraphs and things like that, or that are shorter form writing that would be much easier to go back and edit, I think dictation will be really good for. So I'll keep you posted as I start doing more of that and let you know how that goes. I'm also thinking when I start editing, when I start outlining my next project, which I mentioned in the last video, my Camp Nano for July project is going to be Across the Pond 5. There are pros and cons to that that I'm not willing to debate. This is just what I've decided, it's what my brain wants to write, it's just I've got so many ideas. So I think for outlining that, which most of camp in July is probably going to be outlining, but I think for outlining, because of the way I outline, my outlining process is more just spitballing ideas, sentence fragments, bullet points. Like it's really, it's not, you know, perfect, like complete sentences and complete paragraphs. It is like fragments of ideas. And I do think dictation would be really good for that. So I don't know because I haven't started outlining, but that's my hunch. So we'll see. <laughs> I will keep you updated. So I can see how dictation could be really useful and really helpful in other writing I do and in other parts of the writing process for my novels. So like outlining versus drafting. But even in drafting, I also think that in certain sections, like I think I like it a little bit less for dialogue, but I do still think that for narrative summary and like longer blocks of description, which, you know, I try not to have too much of that, but I do think that when I'm setting up a new scene or when I'm transitioning between scenes and I'm using narrative summary or description for a paragraph or two, I'm going to try to keep in mind to switch to dictation for that. I think for drafting, some writing sessions I'm going to try to do all in dictation just to give my hands and wrists a break. Other writing sessions I'm going to try to remember to do dictation at least for paragraphs, for longer chunks of text, narrative summary, description paragraphs, things like that. So I'm feeling optimistic about it. I feel like a couple vlogs ago I was feeling really resistant to it. Now I'm feeling like this actually could be worth trying. So 
I will touch base with you maybe in a month or so, certainly by the end of the summer. Like I do think I want dictation, to, I really want to try dictation for outlining. So I think in camp next month, I'll be using dictation a lot more. So I'll give you some updates as I start using it for outlining. But yeah, I think moral of the story, if there's something you've been resisting trying with your writing, like dictation, give it a try. You might be surprised. I don't think this will ever be my preferred way of writing, but I am now open to it being useful for certain parts of my writing or certain types of writing, like blog posts or something. And so now I'm feeling a little bit more optimistic and more curious about how I can use this as a tool in my toolbox, even if I don't intend for it to ever fully replace something. But then by practicing it, I will at least have the peace of mind in the back of my head that if it ever did have to replace typing, I could do it. That's your update on how dictation is going. First impressions, pros, cons, how I think I'm going to use it. And I'm not gonna wrap up this video. I just, I'm, I'm stressed. I need to step away from the computer. I'm gonna try to go for a walk because I think that would help. It's still, it's still missing from my dashboard. Okay, but, okay, this makes me happy. It's still missing, but it has had six more views in the last like 30 minutes. So people are still watching it. <laughs> that's that's all I care about. It, it doesn't. It matters a little less that I can't see it in my dashboard if I know people are at least still watching it. Because I was really happy with my June goals, plans, and writing project updates videos. So if by the time you're watching this, if for some reason you have not been able to watch vlog 56 or vlog 57. Um, and if you've not watched my magical hike with mom at Lynx Lake in Prescott, Arizona, please go show those three videos some love because even though the Lynx Lake video is still showing up, not as many people have been watching it and I get it. It's, this channel has become largely focused on writing. A lot of you probably aren't as interested in hiking, but I really love that vlog and it might be just a nice little mental escape. But yeah, I need to step away and just go for a walk. I'm gonna wrap up this vlog here because I think it's gotten a bit long, especially with this little update on dictation. I've got a flashing battery light. We just need to go chill out. If you've enjoyed this vlog, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. I would really appreciate both of those things. I can't think of a question, um, so let me know how you're doing. Leave me some heart emojis if you are so inclined. And, uh, and let's just go for a walk. I'll take you with me. Let's go for a walk. And I will see you all very soon in the next vlog. Thank you very much for watching this one. Okay.